Hey gamers, welcome back to Bandit Souls Captain Cryptic here. Before we get into our video, I wanted to just thank everyone that has come over to this channel. You've given a lot of great advice, you've commented in, you've liked the videos, you've watched the videos, and you have just really made this a great experience for me. I uh, wanted to get into gaming and doing videos on gaming and stuff. And for those that have joined the Discord and, and are helping to run that over there, y'all are awesome, man. Appreciate all the help with it. We are working great as a community. So our video today is going to be some basic stuff that we've discussed in the past but I wanted to give you a friendly reminder it is now Friday if you picked up those pieces of eight on Monday after the reset and you did it just as we said only picking up the red aisle you should be approaching around the 1400 mark on your weekly rank if you were not at 1400 yet understand there are a lot of people that are now using this grind to get that double payout of these sovereigns every week now so it may take a little bit of extra time to get there but once you see that you're at 1400 rank go ahead and collect everything on the board that you want to what i ended up finding out tonight when i went through well this morning when i went through and collected red isle and africa we ended up getting our stuff and we haven't picked up over here in the um east indies yet so i'm gonna do that now but we went ahead and we got our sovereigns and all so that's going to be great, those double payouts. Make sure you're doing that between now and the end of the season. Now, that is not to say at some point they may not fix that, but as of right now, that's what it's doing. I don't think it's a glitch. I don't think it's an exploit. I think it has something to do with that rank board. So pay attention on that rank board. If you get up into you know 10th place and 1st place, it may take you a while to get into a 1,400 rank because not as many people are pulling their 8s now. You need to understand that. They're either... Not pulling eights because they're done pulling eights. They're just kind of doing a little, you know, some of them farming missions in the game, playing some of those world bosses, getting the cosmetics. Or they've slowed down trying to get that double payment on Sovereigns, which affects the entire leaderboard. So make sure you're at 1,400 before you pick up the second time for the week, and you're going to get that second payout on your eights, folks. Um, this has been an amazing game. So we had a couple of... Uh, questions and a couple of people commenting in on our last couple of videos we put in and I wanted to address some of the questions so one of the questions was do you feel like right now this is a viable game to get into and be able to find a multiplayer and enough people to run the missions absolutely I do now I understand it doesn't represent our um, our entire community within the game itself the entire gaming community but we just logged in there's 15 people in this world uh, someone had probably just left typically there's between 15 and 17 people on a server when I load in and I don't see any names that I recognize from our Discord group all these are new people so there's at least 15 people playing it now we can jump out going into another server and we will see a whole new list of names I've never come in and not found anybody at any time of the get day or evening where you're not going to find people on here so, and our Discord's going very strong. We don't have any issues pulling the numbers to farm out La Pest and things like that. So, those are my answer to you, man, is this game is a lot more popular than what people are leading you to believe. I know that there's a lot of hate going on around about it. So, some things that I've noticed when it comes to gaming. Most of the games that people are like, this is the top game, this is the greatest game in the world, like Sea of Thieves, Okay. I, don't, I didn't enjoy Sea of Thieves at all. It just seems like a griefer's paradise. Now, if you have a solid group of people in a Discord and you know you can trust those guys, it could be a fun game potentially. But I didn't care much for the gaming dynamics of the hand-to-hand -hand combat and stuff like that. So it wasn't a big thing to not see it in here because I'd rather not see it than to have it and it'd be really crappy. So you're not going to get those ship, uh, ship to ship as far as hand-to-hand -hand combat on ship deck. That is not in this game. Uh, like you would see over on Black Flag or even with uh, Sea of Thieves. But what this game does do right is it has a really great set of ships that you can build. has a great selection of weapons so far. And that's going to continue to expand coming into new seasons. So this is what is called a live service game. If you're watching this video and you don't know what that means, what it means is they come out with a base game, which is usually a shell of what the completed version would have looked like. And they slowly release that content in. And what that does is it gives the game a natural aspiration of ranking up. And as people come into the game later, they're going to be a little bit lower level. So those that stick with it and those that do the grinds and those that farm out those cosmetics, farm out those weapons and farm out those passes to get the new ship holes and the new armors and things like that that come into the game. If we come over to our smuggler pass here, if you remember, we come up and you had... Uh, get gold you could get fireworks 
you could end up getting uh trying to find this stuff here folks a lot of cosmetics and stuff in there as well then i think it was under gunner's mate we ended up getting the the potent schematic i believe if we can find that in here anyway it's in a chair so yeah you end up getting like the coronad cannons you were able to get a new ship as well now with the ship when it come through you had to get the 90 points to complete it of course we got the bark at level 45 we got a cat at 90 but we also somewhere in here we got a lapontic schematic we got the whaling ward and we got some weapons as well so there's some torpedoes and stuff like that in the game as well a lot of cosmetics i think most of the cosmetics came from the actual smuggler's token if you haven't spent that yet Hang on to it. Season 2 is fixing to start up. I didn't see any cosmetics in here that I couldn't live without. In fact, we're running the Lepesque schematics on our ship. Don't know if you can see that, but we do have that Wailing Ward armor on there because we run a lot of Lepesque with the missions uh, with our Discord group so we can get those missions ground out. It's going to help protect your ship a little bit, not a whole lot, but a little bit better than your other armors when you're dealing with that uh green lafleur weapon man that thing it has that that uh poison to it and it just will zap your ship's stamina it'll kill you in just a second this here gives you about two seconds to respond to be able to hit health hit more stamina and get out of it if you can but it's not a, a real big boost so that's something i like to see where we can improve those armors in the in the future and i imagine those types of things are going to come out and we play a lot of live service games in this community. So one of them would be like World of Warships Legends. We've been really enjoying that. We've been building a crew over there. We've, about, we've almost assembled a full fleet. When I say a full fleet, we're talking about nine dedicated players who are going to work together. And But we want to have more than that. Obviously, we want people that can join in. So we can always fight with that full strength. Uh, but we're also playing Star Trek Online. That's another great game. And uh, uh, that was one of the, the first AAA live service games that I had ever played. And it's been out, oh, close to a decade now. And it is still very active as well. So that should show you what those live service games that maybe they have a slow release. But the release, even though it's slow, it brings in really great content. That's what Skull and Bones is going to be. Uh, when you have a game that people are talking like is not very good and things like that. Go to that gamer's channel and see what type of reviews they're giving on all the games. If you come in and you see games that you know you don't like and they have rave reviews about it and then games that you do like and they talk crap about it, they obviously have a different standard or a different taste in gaming than you do. So I always recommend try it yourself. Skull and Bones, whether it's computer, uh, PS5, or the Xbox XS, you're going to be able to get in and get an eight-hour demo. I recommend you run the eight-hour demo. Understand eight hours is not enough to open up all of the ships in the game, obviously. But it's going to get you pretty close to getting to Padawakan, which is the first medium hole that you're going to come into. And I think you're going to enjoy the game for the aspect of what it is. And you will end up grinding your way through a pass. And you can do that in two and a half days pretty easy. You probably do it quicker than that if you're on it 24-7. But uh, you can get it two and a half hours of some dedicated gaming just blowing up the helm ships like we've showed you how you do the helm farming where you're getting 170 points for every ship you blow up and you can blaze through that pass in like two and a half days pretty easy. So that's what I recommend doing in this. Grind it out when you reach a point where you have pretty much completed the grind. Look at the stuff that you have. Look at what you can still potentially grind out and adjust your gameplay to that and join us in our discord group we are looking to add as many people as we can we want to build a gaming community we are not a mill sim like a lot of people are used to we're not a group of just hierarchies just using you for whatever we can or anything it is free to join the discord guys we want to have a gaming community we have gamers that come in as like, hey have y'all played this game and we'll give it a try and maybe it's not something i myself am interested in but if enough of the people within the gaming community are interested in playing together we create a spot for that where you will have your own voice chat in there you'll be able to text share resources and stuff whatever it is it's just a great game community and that's what i'm hoping to see start happening again within the world but there's been enough segregation amongst the gaming community to understand that you know even though i didn't like sea of thieves per se i'm not going to get on here and make a video talking about all the points of sea of thieves and just show the things that what they really need to work on and be like this is just a really horrible game it wasn't for me skull and bones on the other hand is more along what i would like to see where you're going to have to 
build your weapon set so here's where the difference between this and sea of thieves is this one here you can pick different style weapons it's going to do different style stuff over on sea of thieves you can get different style weapons but it's the exact same weapons and you're just changing out the cosmetic of what the weapon looks like now you can get different types of cannonballs more of a flame ball you can get some that are more of the you know just the solid iron balls you know so you get the explosive for penetrating and stuff but you don't have the different style of cannons that they shoot from as well such as bombarders and stuff so it's really nice to see that aspect of personalizing your ships in this game i do highly recommend that you give it a try if you haven't go check out the free demo and, and check it out for yourself man um I, I enjoy the game. I don't think you've got anything to worry about if you go buy the game today. My recommendation to you is if you do buy the uh, the premium version, it gives you a free token. I don't really recommend getting that one right now. I think you'd be cheaper to buy the basic game and then just get a token if that's something you want to do. I don't imagine unless they put weapons or particular blueprints or something in the pass that I will be buying the pass. You get the pass for free, and my understanding is all the weapons and stuff are going to be in there. You're not going to be able to grind out the bonus gold that you can get unless you buy that smuggler's token. So I'm not too worried about that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not too big on buying cosmetics. I like to grind cosmetics. The reason for that is, is it something that you get to show when you have a completed Lepest set, or you have the completed Roadman Godin set, or you have the completed original Man Godin set? Uh... That's something that you had to grind out and you didn't buy it. So it's kind of a, you know, not really a bragging right, but shows that you're a dedicated gamer in that. And that's what I like to see in stuff. And as my understanding, Ubisoft is saying that any weapon ships or anything like that will always be available to be ground in the game to get it via in the game without having to pay extra for it. They don't, they don't want to have a pay to win type situation where you have to pay to be able to compete. So to me, that, that they are on the right track with this. So those are my opinions i hope you've been enjoying the week man i hope you uh you know weekend coming up everyone is on fridays today so hopefully you got something planned for your family if not if you're like me and you're just old single gamer and you enjoy gaming man let me know in the comments we would love to have you in the discord we've got quite a few guys we've got quite a few gals we've got married couples and and just it's a great community there's it's drama free stuff everyone working together with that you know understand that when you have you know 400 or more people all wanting to grind the same things we're not always going to be able to get into the same servers so we do have a leadership team where we will take enough of the crew who's wanting to grind this go to this server and take the next batch over to the other and be grinding that out so that's one of the great things that we've got going on and we also now have uh, kind of a theme within our rank if you've ever seen any of the John Wick movies so of course you have your your elder you have the high table you have the agents of the high table and then you have adjudicators and stuff that's kind of what a rank system is within the discord as well as moderators and administrators and stuff we've just given it kind of a cool look to it I think it's pretty cool. It's something that's pretty inviting. It gets people engaged and all. So if you're looking for a community where you're not just in-game, but within the community you can be engaged, this, this is the place for you, man. So let me know down below. We'll send you that Discord link out. And the reason I don't just post it up in the video anymore is because it's only good for seven days. We have to make a new one. And a lot of times it'll be a week or two after video comes out. It was like, hey, man, your link doesn't work. It's like, well, yeah, it's expired. So... You message in, hey, I'd like to get that Discord link. We're going to get it to you. When you come over, we have uh, all of our Discord leaders are going to greet you in. They're going to explain how to do things. We have the Continental and we have Concierge there where you come in and say, these are the missions I need to run. It lets him know what type of events we're setting up. So those uh, managers within that, they can get it set up. They let us know via the postings, this is what time we're running this based off of who's on time. On the uh, internet at what time and how many we need and we can build our groups in for there and we come in and we fill in so everybody's got that chance because we do have people spread out around the world this this game is not just here in america it's it's everywhere i mean we've got people from the uk we've got people from uh over in sweden i mean you name it there, there, it's just a, a very big spectrum of people that we have joined in here and we try to find the best schedule where we can get everybody in to be able to grind this stuff out which is not something you're going to find at most gaming communities so make sure you join us up get in there talk with our leadership team you know you'll be able to talk to me as well you get to game with us as well a lot of these guys actually are, are gamers as well they run their own channels and one of the things that we do is we have a area where if you're a member that's active in the community 
you have a place to share your channels as well so you can build a dedicated subscriber base so we try to help everybody out in our communities and stuff now that don't mean just come in and join and start posting your links everywhere you need to become a member which is you come in as a recruit if you've shown that you've reached kingpin rank you post that up that lets us know that you're in-game content okay because i can go in and i can look see how many recruits that haven't hit kingpin so i know i need to set up farming raids to get people's level up and potentially they have they're new to the game so they're going to be stuck on submissions uh the i believe it's midnight something that remy gives i forget exactly what that mission is called a lot of people seem to get hung up on that one so it's great to get the team together bring, bring them over and we help you complete that stuff man uh we have different different levels of leadership within the group and each person they will they will reach out to you based off what your needs are but you have to interact with the community for us to know i know i've seen a few times where people are like well i can't never seem to get anybody to come and farm with me well if a group of farmers have set up in a server what you need to do is you need to join over into that server with them which means that you need to jump in the chat say hey how's it going get added on some friends list so we can get you in the server and you can farm with us because it's easier to move one person into a server than it is to move you know 10 to 20 people over into a completely new server it's just more feasible to do it this way so i hope this invites you in i hope it's something that you're looking for in a group but this is a great game like i say for me the grind has kind of slowed down i mostly play around trying to get those sovereigns up because we do have so much of our silvers you know topped off or pieces of eight are topped off uh, so really all I can really do is just kind of play around with the collection system to get those extra pieces of eight and you can get it twice once right after reset then wait until and when when you do that reset don't collect everything man if you collect everything right after reset you might not be able to get up into that 1400 slot or, or a higher you know we're talking like 1400 1500 1600 maybe you're moving down the leaderboard there is a connection somewhere and i'm not exactly sure where it's at but that seems to be the magic number if you'll get to there you've moved down the leaderboard enough where when you collect your eights again and you can collect them all if you want to at that point on the last collection you're going to get that, that uh, sovereign reward again so that is what I recommend that you do right now. If you have completed everything in the grind, grind out what sovereign you can. We're getting close to the end of this season, so don't know how much of that stuff you're going to be able to actually do, you know. But uh, I think it's going to be fun. But uh, I am going to set sail, and I am going to finish collecting my eights in this area. So I've got one over here. I've only got like four or five positions over here in the east indies i stopped grabbing warehouses and the reason for that is i was able to grind out all the materials i need we were able to get our worm's breath and our you know uh, uh gannet saltpeter and all that and build up a nice stockpile of that some of it we farmed some of it we went ahead and bought with eights and have just want to make sure we had over a million eights we're closer to two million at this point uh and that's set back in the bank so that's that's going to be nice going into season two so another question i get asked quite a bit on this game is what is going to happen at the end of season one going into season two based off some videos that people have been sending out and i understand that the videos that they're watching on that are people that do nothing but bash the game so you can't really trust what information they're coming out i've seen a lot of misinformation come out on so many things that, oh this this new uh fleet management system which is going to be for season two release okay they were talking like it was coming out in the middle of season one here at one time posting up videos and then when it didn't they got mad they were trying to get people ticked off toward ubisoft though ubisoft never said it so one of the things when it comes to updates after a after a weekly reset i would come in i tried to get the patch notes i tried to talk on the uh any ubisoft message board that they have you know social media type stuff there's a lot of it out there but you got to try and piece that information, bring that information to you here in the game. And if there's nothing new, then there's nothing new. So one of the things we did end up getting is we ended up getting this firework that is finally now working. It took them almost three weeks to get it going. But that is the Lepest firework that you pick up, guys. Uh, it's pretty cool looking, I think. When it first released out, it didn't work for the first week. It didn't work for the second week. But they did fix it with this past Monday evening's reset they went in and they fixed that that was the only thing in the patch notes that i seen it was the only thing that they released in the patch notes so i don't think that there's anything else been fixed but that's good though because it means that we're finally working through the bugs and we can actually start focusing on maybe releasing some new content i don't expect to see a lot of new stuff between now and the end of may i think we've got about uh we've got 
right at two weeks left in this this pass so it's getting closer it's getting closer to being completed so I don't expect to see any new ships or anything until season two this is mostly I think they are what they're doing is they've been nerfing the enemy such as Lepest and Zamaharabu to make him easier to defeat because not everybody is in a gaming community or a discord group where they can pull you know five or six guys to take Zamaharabu out in you know less than a couple minutes or go over and bring 10 to 12 guys into Lepest to take them out so they've had to reduce their, their health reduce how strong those characters are for a simple reason just so that you can get those things now that's not something I would expect to continue to happen within the game I think that is something to keep people engaged at the moment but they are really pushing for people to fight as a team if you see the direction that this is going so fleet management that could be something where potentially we're going to see you know maybe they'll bring in the fleet aspect I know a lot of us based off what we'd seen in some of the deck there's only been three episodes of that that I'm aware of and only two of them really had any information they were talking about fleet management and it sounded like there was going to be a way to collect our eights automatically now if that's going to look like Kenway's fleet or something I, I don't know we'll just have to wait and see exactly what it is but fleet management may also consist of a PvP fleet you know some people call it clans it's usually called fleet like if you play Star Trek it's called fleets so you can get you guys together in a group and that's one of the things I'm hoping to see whether or not that comes in season two I don't know we're just gonna have to wait and see exactly what fleet management is as it gets closer they may release some more information on it so uh, that's what I'm hoping for is in-game fleet as far as picking up the eights if, if you're prioritizing picking eights up and you've already gotten everything that you can out of the black market and you've got a million pieces of eight set up i mean i've i collected eights and haven't been collecting them heavy for so long and i don't even i don't even own all the aisles i've only got like uh two three so there was four areas five areas over here in the east indies i didn't bother filling it all up i didn't bother completing africa either i just you know, every night I didn't jump in, grab a territory or whatever, but I got tired of funding it. So I directed my attention toward farming silver uh, and just collecting the eights that, that I was able to build in the Red Isle. And before I knew it, I had a big surplus, had everything I wanted, everything I needed in the game. And I've been playing around with just collecting it slowly throughout the week. Once on Monday evening when I get on about 11 p.m., I come in right after reset just to see exactly what they've done with server maintenance to bring you some information on it. And, uh, you know, if there's nothing new, I'm not going to talk it up and be like, yeah, so this might be new, that might be new. I don't bother going to the stores. You know, they have the store to show that stuff. If you want to look at the store and look at the cosmetics, that's cool. I've never been one that looks at buying just a cosmetic. Now, I do like it when we have new weapons and new shields and things like that that come with a cosmetic perk that's pretty cool i enjoy that and i like to grind that stuff out uh now me like just about everybody else if they come out with a really cool cannon or something or a new ship and you could only buy real game money yeah we probably wouldn't be real happy about it but we would go ahead and do it anyway because we enjoy the game but what i'm not going to do is go spend 20 or 40 dollars for some sales when i can grind these out i mean i i enjoy the lapest sales on this bark i really like the uh sales that i have over on my brigantine that came off of the Roadman Godin. Oh, come on. I got to get up here and collect this. Sorry, guys. Give me just a second. So it does seem like the interact works a lot better. I know there at one time, then, of course, you can run Helm Wagers if you want to. It's not something I run often. Uh, we do have guys that run Helm Wagers a lot together in the group, which is if you're in there and you're collecting your eights, you pop a Helm Wager and you want to double your eights, you call out to the team. If there's enough people there, they'll all join the Helm Wager with you so you can run your, your eights and get a double payout, and that's what working as a team is. Now, there are some people who get upset because people do that because they want to come in and be able to farm. They'll come over with three guys and want to hit one person, and when they come over and realize there's a fleet of six guys, then suddenly, you know, we're, we're, we're the problem, you know. But that's where game play differs a little bit. We are a team. We fight as a team. We win as a team or we lose as a team. That's just the way it is, and you're not going to win them all. It's not anybody's fault if something doesn't quite go right within the, the game. You know, you're not always going to win them. 
that's just the, the facts of life, man. Uh, when you do lose, we learn from it. We see what it is. We each start looking at builds. Some people recommend a certain type of build, and we'll try it out. And when we find a good mix of what works best on a situation, we make videos of it. We let people know because we want to see everybody that plays this game succeed in the game and be able to get what they get. But understand, the only way you're going to succeed in a lot of these farming events that have been coming out here recently, like La Pest and stuff, you got to have a team to play with. Uh, and now I know like La Pest, they'll say two or more players, and sometimes they'll say like three or more players. You need way more than that. You need three times usually what they recommend on some of those things. I mean, when La Pest first come out, we could do them with ten, but we didn't always get – and I'm not talking about the, the world event La Pest. I'm talking about the Blighted Bastion. It would take sometimes, you know, 12 guys to be able to make sure you could farm it effectively, meaning every time you run through it, you win. 10 was kind of hit and miss. Sometimes you would lose because not everybody nails that perfect shot, so not as much damage goes out. Now we can take him with quite a bit fewer. I think right now we farm him about eight members, which is a little bit more comfortable for us as far as we win each time with it. You could probably do them less, but when you can pull those big numbers, man, you may as well pull those big numbers. Get it farmed in. The quicker you get past that event, move on to the next one, the greater your odds are of getting the cosmetics you're wanting. So... Uh, again, like I say, this video mostly is, is to thank the community we have together, man. It was just a reminder to let you know, man, uh, pieces of eight, we're coming up. If you're up in that 1400 mark, it's a great time to go ahead and collect them today. You can do it this evening, you know, whenever you want to, but try to get it collected in before Monday comes around because you want to make sure that you're getting the full effect of those bonuses. All right, we have got a decision to make here. I'm going to figure it on this. It says there is a fleet inbound. My guess is I don't know how it riled up before and I haven't even shot anybody. Oh, there's somebody over here shooting at the fort. That's cool. A lot of guys get in here and grind forts. We do a lot of forts. As a team, you can grind them by yourself. A lot of them. Now, maybe not Ooston and uh, you know, the level 14 forts as well, but you can get a lot of these yourself. It takes a little bit more time to grind them out. But you can run it solo, or like I say, running it with a team is going to make it more effective. Instead of the amount of time it takes you solo to do one fort, we could come through and farm everything but the level 14 and 15 forts out and get those resources that we need for the helm, which is really great to work as a team that way. But I hope you've enjoyed the videos, guys. I'm going to continue to pick up my eights, and I'm going to hop off here. We're going to jump over to Star Trek and start a live stream. So depending on when you watch this video, you may be able to join in. And like I say, uh, my gamer tag here on uh, Ubisoft is Cryptic Gaming 723 It's the same on PlayStation. It's the same on Xbox. I play all, all games on all consoles, man. I don't bother with PCs. They're fine. I don't have anything against the computer. It's just not something... I've ever cared to really mess with much, but if you want to join up, maybe you don't know much about Discord, we can get you in, we can get you to a party chat, talk you through it, and help get you situated, and at the very least, maybe you're just a casual gamer and you don't really want to get involved that much, you can always join up on me if you see me on, if you add me as a friend. Typically when I'm in here, if I'm not making a video, I'm sailing with a fleet of guys and we are just in here farming anything and everything, and you're always welcome to join in on me. Try to keep a slot open for people to pop in. If you see me leave the group after you join over, it's nothing personal. I'm just creating a space for potential players to continue to join into the server because not everyone I play with is in our Discord group. I like to play with all gamers. Now, it is a lot easier for us to communicate when you are because I'm typically in Discord chat. I don't use Xbox Party Chat much or even PlayStation Party Chat much. I typically stick to Discord just because... We've got better options in there for reducing uh, echoes and stuff like that. I can go in and trim out some settings if we got a player echoing back on here. Maybe they've got their TV turned up real loud and you can hear yourself talking back through their speakers. You know how that can get sometimes. Within Discord, we can trim that out manually where we don't really seem to have that on the consoles themselves. So that's usually where you're going to have to get do a voice chat with us. But you can always just jump in, sail along with us, and just destroy stuff. Uh, just kick me a message in 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 the uh, console. Send a quick little message. Hey, man, mind if I farm with you? That way, when we're in here, 
we don't turn and start firing on you but what I would recommend is unless you're in the discord don't join into one of our helm wagers the reason I say that is we are watching when we come in and someone runs a helm wager we join in if a name pops up that we don't recognize within the leadership and I don't haven't gotten a message from that you've added me as a friend chances are you're probably going to get hit because we defend our we defend our members we don't we don't play around with that stuff i know that's happened a few times uh we had a guy recruit somebody and i just seen a random name and i'm going hey are they in the group nobody responded i went over and started slinking a man and i was like oh wait no 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 they're in the group they just don't talk much in chat it's like okay well you need to make sure you let me know that you're part of our team because if i don't recognize the name because we do have recruiters and you haven't really said much in chat and you're not talking in voice chat let me know that you're part of the group i think it's a random person in game so and we always jump straight to the defense or straight to the offense on that when it comes to other players but y'all have a wonderful day i hope you've enjoyed the video